All right, take two. I think it's working. Yeah, there it is. Jazzier sound, that major one. Yep. Hopefully, it won't do it again. Really frustrating. It, sl it really slows down my workflow when that happens. And then, the, if you're going to add the the uh, blues tone to this, you're going to do it between the second and third. occurs if you look at the um, here you can see that right there you got four notes and I mean if you want to memorize that scale you can but I'm not saying you have to it's not really critical and that's the these are the notes here uh, right here that happen when you add these two scales together all right I'm sorry these are a little off Okay, that's still a little off. Anyway. Yeah, it's hard to get them the same. That's a good thing I'm not OCD, because it's not possible. There we go. They're not the same size anyway. Okay, so uh, who's back? And away we go. Uh, yeah, I've got, so we had like 18 before, and now we've got seven. I knew that would happen. It was like, dang it. And now nobody, I don't know if anybody's going to get a notification. I'll probably lose subscribers because like, oh man, stop with the going live thing. All right, let me just see real quick where we are with subscribers. Um, yeah, 109,433. So it says 1,000 in the last 30, 28 days, which actually is up. So the subscriber rates are up. That would say that by the mid of, middle of this month, say the 20th of this month, I might have 110. Uh, no, no, uh, no award for that though. Hey, David, you're, oh, thank you. Thank you, Holly. I uh, appreciate that. Um, so yeah, so what I've done is I've, I've grabbed, you know, I played the whole blues progression. I got all 12 bar blues here, but I've only, I'm only looping the first bar, the A chord. And, and I'm playing the minor pentatonic. against the blues it sounds more bluesy obviously or the minor pentatonic is going to sound more bluesy um sorry we turned that off uh the minor pentatonic is going to sound more bluesy you know a little more serious a little more dark a little more maybe mysterious the major is going to sound a little more hokey you know on the hokey scale it'll be over there but not necessarily again how it's how you use it and it's the context um and so i'm going to play the major uh, the major pentatonic mm -hmm. When, when B.B. King would play the blues, he would often use that sixth instead of the seventh. So he would kind of do a hybrid of these two scales, not adding them all together, but changing a note to uh, in the minor pentatonic to make it a little bit happier. He would do that a lot. Um, the minor would be this, so five, eight, five, eight. The major would be five, seven, five, seven. But he would do five, seven, five, eight. Thanks, Bruce. Timothy, what's going on? <clears throat> Jan's in the house. Take two. 
Yeah, I put take two in the title. So I kept the same lesson number. But I put take two in the title. Because there is some stuff in the first one that's, you know, instructional. Okay, we're up to, we're up to four, 15 concurrent viewers. Let's see. I don't know. Can we get up to... Can we get up to... Um, you know what? I'm going to change the title. I'm going to edit because I got I got um, spaces still. There we go. So 91 out of 100 characters used. So I'm adding the word the blues in the lesson because I think that directs a lot of people. Uh, blue. When I did that, my favorite blues progression thing. That live stream got like, you know, 3,000. I don't know where we're at now. Let me look and see. Got like 3,000 views, which is very high for, uh, for, our, for our live stream stuff. Um, where is that? Oh, no, I'm sorry. My favorite blue stamp was 1,100. Normally, we get around 700. Uh, you know, still not enough to make any money. Oh, wait, what's this? Oh, the Dorian scale. That was interesting. That one got 20, over 2,200 views mystery song the jack and diane one was the one that got almost it's almost up to three thousand views again not enough to generate any real revenue um let's see where is that one let me see how much i've made on it <laughs> just so you know that i'm not like rolling it well i made eight dollars and fifty cents off that however long that was two hour lesson it plus the prep time probably Five hours all in. So, uh, yeah. So I'm rolling in it here. Um, okay. David Sillers, you were lurking in the, in the rehearsal. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. Okay, so let me play a little bit of major. But now that we've our ears have rested and we're not hearing the minor, I'm going to play a little bit of major. It won't sound so hokey. But then I'm going to go back and forth between them. All right. So here we go. Let's hopefully we didn't lose. See, it sounds a little jazzier. It's almost a mixolydian scale. Here's a mixolydian scale. It's five of the seven notes in a mixolydian. to that A major uh, pentatonic and it would create kind of a bluesier sound obviously because that implies the minor pentatonic okay now I'm going to go back and forth between those two scales and I'm going to try to stay in the fifth position this last week um, if if this is a little bit overwhelming at first just take the top two strings and play the minor pentatonic on the top two strings Walter didn't make it back damn him <laughs> and then and then play the major pentatonic on the top two strings and then you then you can kind of go back and forth between those two and you'll you'll start to hear some the differences between the major and the minor pentatonic you could do it on the second and third string, like this. 
you got that, you snip it, and then this. So I could just practice. I mean, you might create some kind of weird little disjointed, disjointed uh, little uh, melodies out in, in that in that uh, uh, exercise, but, um, and then you can take the middle four strings, I mean the middle two strings, and then here, you can take the, obviously the, the fourth and the fifth string, you can take the bottom two strings, and you can kind of practice those. Um, you could even do three string groupings, you know, the top three. You know, kind of, you can just kind of have fun with it, but it should work over the A7 in, in, this, in this context, in the blues context. them all over the place so I'm doing uh, seven five seven eight and I did seven eight seven five knees what's going on your knees are we haven't seen you in a while um, now keep in mind in a blues progression the it goes one, four, and then one for two bars, so I can loop those two bars. So I got a little bit more. It's not, it's repeating every two bars now instead of every bar. Okay, so, but now let's go to the four chord. And I, I, I dragged all of these to, um, uh, to the, to the um, Discord Tom's Lesson Plans and PDFs. And I haven't gone back there, but Holly, did you already do a a, a sheet containing all all nine of them? Yeah, three hours is a long commute, and in California, our gas is now seven dollars a gallon. It's like I saw a six sixty for regular, <laughs> just around the corner. I'm like, oh my gosh. Uh, let's see. Um, all right, so I'm going to delete these, so don't, don't, don't panic. Uh, let's see. You know, okay, I'm just going to outright delete them, and I'm going to bring in the D, we're going to do the D major and minor pentatonics. Okay, so we're going to work on the four chord now, in the same position. So we're going to be dealing with two different pentatonic shapes. Uh, remove, yes. Yes, all right. So now we're going to the four chord. And where where did I put this? Oh, desktop. You know, I'm gonna quit this. Sometimes I think that uh, um, I'm not sure if there's a, a one, one of the other softwares that I have operating here um, is creating that problem. Um, let's see. All right, so I want the D major, so okay, so I'm, I can just drag them all over at once here, them like this. There's one. So there's the D minor pentatonic. Hopefully, I did this right. I was doing it this morning. Okay, there's the D major pentatonic. You see, I made it a lot bigger. And then this one is the hybrid. And hopefully, it's the hybrids I'm worried about. The other ones I'm not too worried about. The hybrids, hopefully, I got them right. Again, the hybrids are more just like, oh, notice that this is them all combined together. It's not, um, but let's play these together because these are maybe not as familiar um, shapes in the pentatonic realm um, as pentatonic, what I call pentatonic number one, which was the A minor one. Pentatonic number two was the other shape. So the, the next shape when you're playing the pentatonics uh, is pentatonic number three, that's not these. This is four and five. 
So this shape here, this is again over a D7. So play a D7 chord here. The voicing I'm playing there, by the way, is just five, four, five on the fifth string, fourth string, and third string. Okay, you see that? So I got a D here, and I got an F sharp and a C here. These are the guide tones. Really, that's all. If I have a bass, and I do, so uh, let me mute this. There's a bass in there. I don't know if you can hear that bass, but that's all I need, really. In fact, I'll show you again the whole progression. Just put those two fingers on the fretboard, and we're going to start out at the at the um, fifth fret. So we're going to be five and six. Watch. Down a fret. Back up a fret. Stay there. This is A7. Down a fret. D7. Back up. Now we're going to go up a fret. Again, these are guide tones. Thirds and sevenths. Down two frets. Up a fret. Up a fret. And then back down. And some people get mad. Well, you're going, you're saying you're going down and you're going up. It's like, no, no, I'm actually going down. The pitch is going down. We're talking musically here. Um, this is going up the fretboard. This is going down the fretboard. So and that's how you, that's how people that disagree with me talk. <laughs> right? Am I right or am I right? Okay. So you have to agree with me, or else I make you, or else I imagine your voices. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm running out of coffee. I'm gonna have to slow down on that. I don't want to run out of coffee before we're done. Uh, I got a I got a bunch of work to do today too. So um, I got three clients that dropped work in for me to do today, and more coming. So um, let's see here. Down, up, up, down, same thing. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay. So let's see. All right. So let's go over this minor pentatonic. Um, we're going to go ahead and start on the sixth string, but the root for it is right here on the fifth fret of the fifth string. Okay. That's a D note. So there's our, there's our root of the scale. All right. So here's the D minor pentatonic. It's five, eight, five, eight, five, seven, five, seven. Six, eight, five, eight. And just visualize this D7 chord when you play that. It's the exact same scale as this one, but voice down here. So pentatonic one and D would be up here at the 10th fret, starting on D. And notice I'm not playing the top string because I don't have that here. And notice I'm starting on the fifth string. And that's those are the exact same notes. And there's an advantage to, to knowing all your pentatonic shapes up and down the fretboard because I, I can play the blues. And go back and forth between the scales. staying in one position and that um that that just it, it the reason that's a one one reason it's a good thing to 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 know how to do is it so it doesn't sound like you're just moving the same scale oh no what happened no oh, just this it scared me <laughs> dirty pot so and i could just move the pentatonic number one scale all over the place Like you're moving a scale around it doesn't really and 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 you have there's less continuity uh, it's less less smooth you can really kind of 
snake and slip and slide your way around the scales if you kind of learn them all in one position. So, all right, let's go over this one again. Pen uh, minor pentatonic. This is the what I would call pentatonic um, number four, uh, shape-wise. And uh, don't need to know. There's no quiz on that. That's just my nomenclature. But if we were to play them all in order on the fretboard, and we started with a, consider this number one, number two. The next shape being number three and that shape being number four, that would be this one here. Okay, so it's again five, eight, five, eight, five, seven, five, seven, six, eight, five, eight, and then backwards. Eight, five, eight, six, seven, five, seven, five, eight. So, um, all right. Then um, now let's do the major scale. The major pentatonic is the pentatonic number five. You'll notice that. Look at all that straight line right there. Okay. So if you look down here, you see that hard to point. Okay. I don't know why that's so hard, but see that? Boom. Okay. That's the bottom of pentatonic number one, right? Pentatonic number one in D major would be here. So this is pentatonic number five. It's the one right before it. Um, let's see. Oh, is it a good idea to remember my position of which fret I'm on by looking at the dots on the fretboard? Um, when a guitar does not have them, I'm lost on the fretboard. Um, yeah, I, I don't. I don't disagree with that. Um, it's what guitar doesn't have them. Is for example my my let's see does this guitar have it? Yeah, th well this one has no it did not so nylon guitars don't have it so I actually put a dot on there um, I just found round stickers and I had, I had like uh, these plastic sheets that, I don't know where I got them somebody gave them to me or left them in that in their apartment you know that was one of the advantages of managing an apartment when people moved out they would leave stuff sometimes it was a good thing and sometimes it was a really big headache but um, uh, but I think somebody left behind a bunch of the, a stack of these like plastic peel off letters and they had uh, periods as well. And so I used the periods on my classical guitar so that I could mark my frets. And on my, on my nylon, I only mark the fifth fret. Uh, but yeah, you can mark, you could do something like that. You know, you could probably find something like that in a craft store. Um, not that you need uh, sheets of plastic letters just to get a little dot. Um, my uh, my guitar tech on my mandolin when when he uh, put the bridge he he used whiteout and put two little dots in two opposite corners on the bridge so if it ever moved I knew where it belonged and whiteout is not I don't think it's going to hurt I mean if it's cheap guitar I wouldn't worry about it if it's a really really nice guitar a, a pre-war you know one million dollar if it's you know Eric Clapton's guitar that you bought on auction for a million dollars. Um, I'm talking to you, Jim Ursay. Jim Ursay, <laughs> you, you ever watch my live stream? Um, if uh, uh, if it's that, then maybe you don't want to put white out on it. But I think you know you're you're safe putting it on most guitars. I wouldn't. I'm not. I don't really care about my guitars that you know deeply that I'm worried about uh, a little scratch or a thing like that. So some people are really really finicky about their guitars, and I get it. But I'm I'm just not that way. I'm probably more finicky about my car, about my car which is 12 years old. Um, so, yeah, let's see. Everyone here, I'm caught up with sort of technology these days. Yeah. <laughs> I deserve more subscribers. Well, thank you, Bingus. I suppose that's true. I, I'm a little lazy lately. I've been so busy. Um, I've got a lot of ideas for new videos, but filming them and editing them and then uploading them and then doing all the tags and all that stuff all the paperwork that has to happen to get a video up now um not paperwork but you know what i mean just filling out make sure that people can find it is um is pretty time consuming and uh lately i've been busy which is good uh and uh we were out of town for my daughter's wedding 
and all that kind of stuff. So it's been a while. I've got a video that I did on how I got to 100,000 subscribers, um, and I've not, I haven't finished editing it, and I may not. I may not upload it. But at this point, uh, that's that's coming. So okay. So let's go over this major pentatonic. Okay, this is D major pentatonic, 50 notes. Right here, we're going to grab it with our second finger. I'm not going to isolate it because I'm not going to. I don't want to flip off my audience here. <laughs> your first finger, your second finger, your third finger. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna we're gonna start with our second finger on the fifth fret, and we're gonna go two, uh, five, seven, five, seven, and then four, seven, four, seven. Five seven five seven. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna loop the D chord, all right, and I'm gonna play the minor scale. Oh well, let's go do, do this again. Five seven five seven. Notice I'm using my pinky and third. You don't have to. I mean my second and uh, pinky. You could use first and third if you want, and then move down because. You know, if you were just to practice this scale, like if you were just playing up and down, up and down, like if you want to do it a hundred times or whatever, just to get it under your fingers, then yeah, sure, why not use these fingers and keep it all in a line like this, positional plane, where every finger is assigned a fret. That's fine. But when the rubber meets the road and you're actually using the thing, you're, you're probably going to put more dominant fingers on those notes because A, we're playing the blues. Um, For me over Marty Schwartz, you can say that. <laughs> I don't know Marty, so I've, I've, I've seen come a couple of his videos. He's very popular, but that's I think it's what he does for a living. See, uh, the advantage you have and the disadvantage you have in me is that the advantage is that you're, you're actually learning from a guy that I'm doing this for a living. I literally, as soon as I hang up the phone here with you guys, um, I'm going to work. And I'm playing on a record today and a video game today, and I think a TV show later. So, I, and that's what I do for a living. I, I write music and I do sessions, and I write music for TV, and I write with pop artists, and I write uh, and I do sessions, and I play like 40 different instruments. So, in me, you have someone that's like really making a living at this. Um, the downside is you don't you're not going to get as many videos from me as you might from someone who's doing video and making a living on their YouTube channel. Um, you know, I, I make, to be honest, I make between, you know, three fifty to a thousand dollars a month on my YouTube channel. So with a, you can do the math on a hundred thousand subscribers. If you had a million subscribers, you might be able to multiply that by 10 and assume that they're making 4,000 to 10,000 a month. Uh, but that's not necessarily true. They may be making more, um, or they may be making less. It just depends on the, the mon mon uh, monetization process and what they're doing videos on and things like that, too. So he puts up two lessons a day. That's crazy. Yeah, I, I, yeah, this, yeah, I, would, I would have to do that full time. And I think I, I don't plan on retiring. And I don't know if I, I would call making videos retirement, <laughs> Joe. You know, it, it's like, uh, uh, what you know what I? Yeah, you put white out. Oh, you used white out too. Yeah, exactly. White out. White out works great because white out you can just scrape off with your your thumbnail if you don't want it there anymore. It'll probably wear out eventually. Um, I was looking for some white out in the house. I couldn't find it. We used to have it, but it's not something you really keep in the house anymore. Um, because you're not typing or handwriting things anymore. Everything's on the computer. You can change it. So. All right, so uh, one more time on the major pentatonic. We'll, we'll go over both of them. Major, um, and I'm using my second, just like I said, to, to be pure on the uh, positional playing thing. So five, seven, five, seven, four, seven, four, seven, five, seven, five, seven. Backwards, seven, five, seven, five, seven, four, seven, four, seven, five, seven, five. It's a very symmetrical scale, right? We got two of those and two of these and then two more of these. So. It, it kind of it kind of is a if it weren't so many notes played with your stupid pinky it would be a fun scale to play right uh, some people probably play it like this where they reach the first finger down and just keep that third finger on top but again if you look at that those six notes right there that's the the top of the this pentatonic is the bottom of this pentatonic 
it's kind of how you make them. I mean, if I knew this pentatonic and I knew this pentatonic, then I would by default know this pentatonic. Uh, it's just how they, they lay out. So, um, okay. Now uh, the minor pentatonic one more time is five, eight, five, eight, five, seven, five, seven, six, eight, five, eight, and then backwards. Eight five eight six eight uh, seven five seven five eight five eight five. to 70 oh we're 26 awesome okay so we got past the original video so i had to start this video over again because my my uh computer stopped processing audio through logic and i don't know what happened um i hope it doesn't happen again so now i'm just looping a d chord so here's the minor pentatonic over that d7 this one Keep your eyes on those roots because those are good landing notes. If you hit the root enough, people know what they, people are confident. People listening to you are going, oh, he knows what he's doing. Or she. When I say he, it's kind of like saying you guys. I just mean everyone. Oh, Sam's here. Good. What's interesting about this, the D7 by itself, the D minor pentatonic sounds great. So I'm playing this one right here. Sounds great. But the weird thing is in the context of the blues, and if D7 is the four chord, that, the minor pentatonic just doesn't sound as good to me. Uh, almost the major pentatonic sounds better, but listen, so I'm going to play A7 to D7, and I'm going to play the A minor pentatonic, and I'm going to play the D minor pentatonic, and it's like, eh, I'm not, I'm not completely sold that it's maybe the best choice in blues, but it could, you know. Context of A blues and D is the four chord, which it is. Um, I almost prefer the sound of the major pentatonic, but but when you're jamming over a one chord vamp, you don't really have that context. You don't know what chord it is. It could be the one chord, it could be the four chord, it could be the five chord in a blues. You don't really know. It's just a one chord vamp. So that's what's a little deceptive about this, but it's still good to practice over the one chord and get these scales down and try to find little licks in there. discover a lick or invent a lick try to play it in two or three different octaves so you have you're multiplying that licks potential and every one of those octaves will have a different um, flavor or different different uh, emotion attached to it you know because the lower ones kind of have this you almost have to make a stink face and this one's more like we like you gotta make you got like a migraine or something and then this one it's like something smells bad okay so it depends your face depends on the octave. This is an important lesson. <laughs> Gosh, are any of you paying attention? That's pretty, that's comedy gold right there. Maybe somebody could do screenshots <laughs> and create a, you know, create a little, uh, little meme for the, for the, uh, for the channel. I mean, for our discord. Okay. Now I'm going to go to the D major. Again, that's five, uh, five, seven, five, seven, four, seven. Exactly. Stereo 
say I or he and she, it doesn't matter. That's very kind of country sounding right there. That that major pentatonic over a seventh chord sounds a little bit more country too. Jazz too. Now the hybrid that I've written right here, okay, that's just combining the overlap of these two. And you don't need to learn this scale. Don't don't freak out. Try you know. But all of those notes are technically good. Watch, I'll play all of them. It's almost like a mixolydian scale with a flat three thrown in. It's pretty much all it is. Uh, so it's a seven note scale with one more note, so it's an eight note scale. church got stuck in uh, uh, Jamaica for a couple extra days because of Ian and they got rained on pretty hard for a couple days but uh, that was it um, I Beth and I honeymooned in Sanibel so Sanibel is was flattened uh, looks a lot like Gulfport after um, Katrina my dad and my wife's father both lost their homes completely in Katrina so yeah it's nice here today oh yes yeah, well you're in Joseph is in Long Beach Long Beach is always nice the temperature is always pretty good there you never get the hundred degree temperatures do you Joseph okay now um, I'm gonna get rid of all these okay so don't worry about it. these are all you can always do a screenshot if you want um, let's see I'm gonna get rid of all these diagrams and yes I'm going to drop in the E, we're going to do the E minor and major pentatonic and the hybrid thing, okay? Boom. There's the E major pentatonic. And that's pe pentatonic shape number four. This is that dreaded pentatonic shape number three that we don't like. And then here's the hybrid of those two together, which is kind of crazy looking. Again, that's not something you need to know or memorize. I'm just adding these two scales to my, uh, what is that? My right, your left, adding those scales together to create this third hybrid scale. It's not one you necessarily need to, to know. Um, oh, I'm sure you got hit hard in South Florida, Max. Holy cow. Uh, yes. Um, now, um, and again, the storm surge was... What was the, the storm surge was 14 feet? I think Katrina was 30 feet, which is crazy. Um, so if you're anywhere below 35 feet at sea level, you were going to get water in your front door. And that's what happened to my dad. He was actually staying with a friend that was further from the ocean, from the Gulf. And water filled the house all the way to the ceiling. They actually climbed in the attic and the water started to fill the attic. And they had nowhere to go, so they almost drowned, he and his friend. Um, and then when he went back to his apartment, his apartment and his car were both gone. Uh, there was nothing left. They found his car later, two miles away, filled with mud. <laughs> so it was like, gosh. Um, uh, yeah, it has been hot. But for you, hot is like, what, 85? That's about as hot as Long Beach gets. Up here in, in, in the valley, we get... You know, we have 108, nah, 105, uh, but not very often. We, it was pretty mellow. Okay, now I've got to go to, so 12-bar blues, you got A for a bar, D for a bar, A for two bars, so that's four, the first four bars. Then it goes to D for two bars, and then it goes to A for two bars, and then we finally get to E, so I think I, I'm right about here. Here it is. Now, 
Now, even though the E chord is up here, I'm positioning here in fifth or fourth position. So the, the E chord you might want to think of is this kind of E7 here. Um, you take make a C chord, add your pinky to make it a C7 chord like that. And slide it so your first finger is at the fifth fret, which is an E note, like how you tune the E string. And that's an E7 chord. And that's, you can visualize that shape. Again, so I didn't, haven't talked about it with the previous two, two uh, chords, but um, we're basically doing what's called caged method. We're using the chord to kind of help us to find the scales. So here's the... It's a C form, the C in the in the cage method. It's the C of the word cage. And if we move that up to here, we got... So I'm visualizing that C shape, consequently. And, and keep in mind, generally, that's how I think when I'm soloing. Um, I do know the scales. But I'm also just kind of like, okay... I'm seeing this chord shape, so I've, I've just like know a lot of licks. I know a lot of notes around that. Um, if you take a triad and then you add the the fourth and the and so you have a triad this is one three one three five. Um, if you know where the one is, you could probably find the two. If you know where the three is, you can probably find the four. And if you know where the five is, you probably can find the, the sixth. And those are all generally often good notes in in this context. So um, you know. Would be the four and then the the six or the two would be like if i'm in an e that's a two one kind of thing that's a four three so this is a different lesson <laughs> i've just morphed into cage method Playing the major pentatonic now, which is closer aligned to that kind of caged thinking, but not necessarily. Okay, so I'm gonna let me reverse these. I put, I'll put the minor on top and the major on the bottom. Art, right, what's going on? Sam, uh, the chart on the top right says minor pentatonic, but it looks like a hybrid. Oh, you're right. All right, so let me delete that. Uh, remove and let me see if I can fix that. Hold on. Boom, boom, boom. Phone pick a page just in case I mess it up. All right. Edit. Boom. Uh oh. Why is my hard drive making a noise? Major slash minor, right? Is that what I did before? not great but and I don't even know you know I'm looking at hopefully it's right but that better Sam so that's the two uh, scales uh, superimposed on each other I think that's right the dots I couldn't fix this way but okay now um, let's see Everyone, please like, sh share. Oh, like, share, say. Yeah, always share. Um, one thing, though, just so you know, have you ever noticed if, if there's a, a YouTube video embedded in a website? Um, that And it's fine. Uh, it, it's, it's still free promotion. But if it's embedded and you click on it, there's no ad. But if you click on the where it says YouTube, um, click on it, opens a new window and sends you to the YouTube page and then there is an ad um, so I 
that's why I have an option when I do videos, whether to allow or not allow embedding. Uh, because again, I don't think you make any money when you embed and people watch the video that way. Um, so that's fine. Um, because hopefully what, what that leads to is somebody subscribing and then they get a notification and then they click on it and watch it in the thing. Or if they have YouTube Red. Um, so I'm not even sure why YouTube allows embedding because uh, if, they're not, they're, if I'm not making money, they're not making money. So anyway. Um, okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play uh, using the minor pentatonic only. In fact, I'm going to play the top two strings only. This, this is actually, on these two scales, the top two strings are a great snippet. That minor right there, that's, you got the root, the third, the fourth, and the fifth. And you can even, you want, you want to throw that blues, I don't know, if, uh, uh, John is still here, but um, he was asking about that blues tone. But, you know, you can use it as a passing tone between four and five. You can use it as a grace note from four. You can use it as a grace, grace note for five. Okay, and then, uh, so I'm just gonna do that for now. Okay, just the minor, maybe with some blues tones. And this is one that be, uh, Steve Ray Vaughn would use a lot but when it went to the five chord in the key of A. the top four notes of the major pentatonic. See, that sounds hokey, doesn't it? Against that minor. Uh, eventually it won't. I went up to the six. Added the four. It's already got the two. You have root, two, three, five. There's no money for YouTube. But they also like, I mean, probably what YouTube is getting when you click on a video embedded, you're, they're, they're probably getting information, which is like money to, to Google. So. Okay, so that's the top two strings of the major pentatonic. George Benson would do this lick a lot. Play the five, flat third, slide into that major third, and then hit the E. pentatonic doesn't sound so hokey anymore does it because we've been away from the minor pentatonic for a while okay now I'm gonna go to the minor and major we'll go back and forth I'm gonna stick with the top two strings open scales that's the all the notes there on this one here top two strings not really a scale I would use necessarily but I would use all those notes so I might go kind of I don't know anyway okay so um, now you almost have to have all of those scales out. Um, 
to do this. But what I might do here is I think I'm going to let's see. I'm going to keep the minor pentatonic here, okay? So that's that one. I'm going to get rid of these two. All right? I'm making an executive decision. And this is not law. Uh, but I'm going to say that for the E chord, this is probably going to be our favorite of the two scales. All right? For the D chord, for the D chord, for the four chord, I'm going to say that we're probably going to want the D major pentatonic. All right? I think this is a better scale. And if you look at these two scales, they're very similar, aren't they? Like, look, it's one note difference. If I were to name these notes, okay, I'd have, uh, starting on the root of the D of the major, this one here, starting that R, that's a D, and I have E, F sharp, A, and B. Okay, if I start on the, the D over here on this one, it would be D, E, uh, G, A, and B. So it's one note difference. Instead of an F sharp, we have Gs, and over here, instead of the Gs, we have F sharps. So that makes sense that these two scales are kind of like, oh, okay, this, if this one works, this one's probably more likely to work. The D minor, just to me, just sounded too, I don't know, it just sounded too forced. It almost sounded like we were sliding the A minor pentatonic up to the to the fifth, uh, to tenth fret and just playing the same same shape. Okay. Now for the E for the A, I, I I'm torn because I could I could literally use either one of these, uh, the A minor pentatonic, or or the the uh, the A major pentatonic. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the blues. I'm going to let this whole progression with twelve bar blues. And again, it's one bar of D. One bar, I'm sorry, one bar of A, one bar of D, two bars of A, two bars of D, two bars of A. I kept it really simple. A bar of E, a bar of D, a bar of A, and a bar of D. If I add that up, it's 12, 12 bars. Okay, so um, I'm going to use, um, so here's my, and I'm sorry it doesn't say what chord it is. Okay, just look at the root. The root should tell you what chord it is. I apologize, I should have put up there A minor pentatonic and D major pentatonic and everything. But here's our... So here's our here's our one scale the scale over the one chord the A chord here's our scale for the four chord and then here's our scale for the five chord all right and I'm gonna go with a gainier sound let's see what I can get here what time is it oh okay not too bad. major I said I hear, I hear that A minor or E minor pentatonic, and I hear I think of of, of C Ray Vaughan. 
all the time. Now, again, I'm fighting really hard not to slide into different uh, pentatonic uh, diatonic scales like mixolydian, uh, the major over the, instead of the minor. So I'm trying to stick to these three scales over those three chords. Now I'm going to just do whatever I want to do, okay? Um, and maybe at some point as I go, I'll, I'll say what I'm doing, but I don't know. Um, Santana really likes uh, minor scales. Maybe uh, Dorian scales. Like D minor. He likes Dorian scales. Um, I don't know that he uses harmonic minor scales at all. You know, that, that's kind of a pseudo-Latin kind of thing, uh, the harmonic minor. It's very exotic sounding. But he doesn't really do necessarily Latin. Almost, Santana almost kind of plays minor blues a lot. And that's a different, you would not do, in, in minor blues, you wouldn't use any major pentatonics at all. You would only use minor pentatonics. Um, we haven't talked about minor blues. So, but I got your meaning. What scale? You know, your scales. Yep, I knew what you meant. Um, the Munster theme. Oh, oh, Groovy kind. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm not gonna think about what scale I'm using. I'm just gonna do what I do. Hey, Tom, I wanted to improve on playing solos, but whenever I play notes in a scale, my backing track, it sounds a bit hollow and flat. Yes, uh, play less notes. Uh, Try to play melodies and sing along with your playing. So if you just play scales, like if I just played. That's boring. Nobody wants to listen to that. There's a sh Instagram and TikToks full of all these shredders that can play stuff like that. And I'm like, I would never buy any of those records. They are boring. It's just because you can play fast doesn't mean anything. Um, and not that slow is good, it's just that you, you want to have a conversation with your audience. And if you're talking so fast that they can't understand what you're saying, what difference does it make? So what you want, when soloing, what you want to try to do is just kind of try to say something. And, that, and that's very esoteric, I realize that. That's, not, that's, like, that's like saying, you know, feel more purple. <laughs> but I'll, 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 try to ex I'll try to model it right now, um, but it's... It's a little off topic because um, I'm going to be trying to show scales, which is the thing I just told you, the kind of like don't just play scales, play ideas. But I'm using the scales to find the notes that are in bounds and that, are, that make the most sense and create the most common melodies that people recognize. Um, and, you, you know, you got to connect with the audience. And if you're speaking a language they don't understand, um, then they're not going to listen. But if you speak a language they that sounds familiar to them, they're more likely to be engaged. So here we go. in this position of Vibrato. And this is 
the blues, obviously, but. me showing off um i don't know if that was showing off i'm not a great blues player but i um i'm not even a good blues player um i've had i had i played in one blues band one gig <laughs> i mean the band only played one gig so it wasn't like i got fired or anything uh, it just i don't think it was our thing and we, we were called Frosty Vagabond. Uh, I forget who named the band. I think it may have been the bass player. And, and that was the name of, a, of an asteroid, believe it or not. That's one of, the, one of the asteroids circling around the sun is called Frosty Vagabond. Uh, I think if you Google it, you can see images of it. Um, yeah, I, so Glitter, hopefully that kind of... Uh, yeah, so scales are good to know. Um... But ultimately, you you want you want to to say something, and scales, like you said, are going to just kind of leave you dry. They're just going to kind of be boring. Um, sorry, my wife. My wife is texting me. Okay. Um, so, um, um, the, like I said, you want to, you want to try to say something, what, what you might do is, um, you know, record or get a jam track or something, you know, even just a one chord. It's really hard to write a good solo over a one chord jam, to be honest. All right. Um, I was doing it. I was talking to, we were talking to, I was talking to Walter when he was on earlier about that uh, Toto track that I wrote um, to sound like 80s Toto just for fun. It was just something I did for fun. And Walter really liked it and wants to play drums on it. So he's good because he's a huge Jeff Percaro fan. He can, he can nail Jeff. He can nail that feel. Um, and uh, um, I, uh, uh, sorry, the, the, um, that's a more of a chord progression solo over. But the funny thing was, I think I set up 16 bars. So having a long solo is hard, too. Um, when you're just jamming with friends, you tend to jam over the blues. So the first thing I suggest, and I've, my, my viewers know this, um, glitter is that um, learn how to play the rhythm of bl the blues. You learn to play a blues progression, 12 bar blues all the way through. And uh, I've got videos on this. Um, we've talked about this in the past. They're in the, you know, if you look back in the live stream lessons, you can do a search and you know, just do Tom Straley and blues in YouTube. And you should be able to find some of those. Uh, there's a lot of them. So you might have to sort through them. But basically the number one thing I tell people is learn the progression, learn the blues. There's a several reasons for this, um, but it's kind of a weird progression. Most songs go in four chord, four bar chunks, eight bar chunks, 16 bar chunks, but not 12. The only thing that does 12 is the blues. And so people tend to kind of get lost in the middle of it. Um, you know, you can play a really super duper simplified blues where you're sitting on the one chord for four bars and then you go to 
two bars of the five chord, a four chord, sorry, and then the one chord for two bars, and then go to the five chord for two bars, and go to the one chord for two bars. And that's about the simplest version of the blues you could do, where you really, most of it is just the one chord, in this case would be A, and then you have two bars of D7 and two bars of E7. Um, that would be about the most, I guess you could say, truncated version of the blues that you could do. Um, but the one I play here is one, four, one, one, A7, but one, the four chord, E7, four chord again, two, very simple, one, again, one, one, now five, five, four, to one, to four. Tempo here is 100. All right, that's a real simple blues progression. You need to be able to play that 100 times in a row without messing up. Okay, again, there's I, two major reasons. One is so that you can jam with others. If you screw up and play an 11 bar blues and a 12 and a half bar blues or a 10 bar blues or a 13 bar blues or 14 every other time, nobody's going to want to jam with you because they can't count on you. Like, oh, you're on the one court. No, wait, you're on the four. Why are you on the four chord? It's supposed to be the, like, ah, you know. So it's like, forget it. Don't come over to our jam session. Okay. The other reason, once you've done it a hundred times in a row, perfect, without making a mistake, it's up here. And now when you go to solo, you can start to anticipate those chord changes. You don't have to think about it so much. And when you're, this is something Steve Lukather told me that, and I don't know if you know who that is, but Steve Lukather, the guitar player for Toto, who I wanted to be like when I moved to LA 40 years ago. He was told to, by Eric or uh, by um, uh, Larry Carlton, another guitar player in LA that I wanted to emulate. Larry Carlton told Lukather when he was just getting started, he said, "Don't think, play." And that's really you. You kind of have to think. Um, you kind of have to think if you don't know the song. Like if you're just trying to, and even then, if you don't know the song and somebody starts playing, you just go for it. And blues licks, blues scales, minor pentatonics, those are great starting points for any soloing. Um, there's a lot of famous soloists that that's kind of all they use and nobody really ever says anything. Nobody says, hey, are you gonna learn a Mixolydian scale? You know, I, I'm always amazed when I'm like, oh man, I really like, you know, like I, uh, David Sanborn, sax player, New York guy. Love his playing, love his tone. Just always loved him, I loved his vibe. And then when I go to figure out his licks, I'm like, you know, he's mostly playing pentatonic scales and minor scales or, you know, some diatonic stuff, but there's a lot of blues scales in there. Um, another thing I thought, oh, you know what I should do is I should transcribe, because one of the things I try to do through the years is to listen to other players other than guitar players, like piano players. Can I, can I figure out a piano solo on the guitar? Can I figure out a sax solo on it? Can I figure out like Jean-Luc Ponte, a violin solo, or Stefan Grappelli, the violin on and Django Reinhardt? or David Sanborn, a sax player, or Miles Davis, a trumpet player, figure out their solo because it's not something a guitar player would normally do. Guitar players tend to move around in shapes and things like that. And um, so you're gonna sound like a million other guitar players if you emulate guitar players. But if you emulate people that don't uh, play guitar, if you em emulate other instruments, you're likely to broaden your, 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 your um, alphabet and your, uh, di you know, your vocabulary. Um, your musical vocabulary. But I remember going to like, oh, you know, I really love Christina Aguilera, like her riffs when she would sing a pop song and her riffs that she would do. I'm like, so I started transcribing her riffs and I went, these are just blues guitar riffs. She was, and it made me think, I wonder, and I don't know this, I don't know Christina, I don't know any of her, well, I probably know some of her producers, but I, I, I've, you know, never asked them this. But I almost speculate that before she sings a song, she has a guitar player come in and just shred over it, playing blues licks and just doing, you know, so, and then she comes in and goes, oh, I like that lick. I think I'll sing that lick. I think I'll sing this lick. I'll sing that one, you know. A lot of times it's just a fall off she would do or something on a phrase. Um, but that's, um, uh, when I started transcribing, I was like, I was just transcribing. I, I realized I'm just transcribing guitar riffs. Somehow she just sings guitar riffs. Um, Justin is the same way. He, he, Justin has these licks in his head. I'm like, where do you get these from? And it's not, it's not like he listens to blue, blues guitar. It's just like he just intrinsically has these licks in his head. And they're kind of R&B licks. They're kind of sometimes blue licks. 
uh, blues licks. Uh, sometimes they're, um, I don't know, it's like rock. I don't know. They're just, he just has, he's like a little bird. Um, sitting next to him, he just, he, it's like, where did you come up with that? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> so he's very, yeah, violin is definitely different from guitar. Um, violin is, is uh, tuned in fits. So I always make the case that I, you know, I love, when I play mandolin, I love the fact that the, I can play triads real fast, like triads on guitar, you know, to do this. That's just not, there's no good way to play that, you know, it's like. And that's basically how you would play it on mandolin, except you wouldn't have to do the shift. You'd just go, be like. Uh, That on mandolin is a triad. But if I were to do that as a triad, like a B major, I'd have to do that shift. It's just not clean. But I can do that all day long. So that's the beauty of having a, a tuning of a fifth. I, if I go down. So these are the top two strings of a mandolin. That's an A. super easy to play a triad that way if you're tuned in fifths. But yeah, so that's, but that's not how a guitar is tuned. Uh, some people have, actually there are a couple, does Charlie Hunter play with guitar tuned in fifths? He was just in town. Um, some friends posted videos of him. He's an amazing guitar player. He plays basic guitar. Same time, he can do chord melodies. He can play solos. He's, he's just a crazy all around musician. Yeah. Mandolin is tuned fifths, so it's the tuning of a mandolin is G D A E, which is actually a bass upside down. Um, so, because the inversion of a fifth is a fourth, and that a bass is tuned in fourths, uh, you still want to get an IRL teacher, but have really erratic work schedule. What's an IRL teacher? Yes, yeah, yeah, and and they, you got the bow. Yeah, so you don't have to worry about plucking each individual note, you know, unless you're doing pizzicato, obviously. Yeah, so the bow does, like, yeah, you can just... The thing I'm not good at is is mo moving the bow and not hitting two strings. Like, that is really hard for me. You know, somebody who does it, obviously. And, the, you know, the bridge on a violin is arched like that so that you can target one or two strings. And if you push really hard, you, you know, if you push down really hard on the bow, you can get three strings. But I don't, I don't hear many people do that. Um, um, oh, I, didn't, I missed that, Sam. Sorry. Uh, if you're playing the 12 bar blues in the aforementioned 1, 4, 5 progression, is there a better time to modulate minor to major? Um, not necessarily. You probably what you, because of this. Now, with the the jazz progression we did before right with the the it was the one six two five progression the george benson kind of progression and i thought i didn't i record it i don't have it i don't know where it is anyway um it was literally your tonality is d major all the way through or i think we did a c major or something i can't remember but it's one tone you know one heart key all the way through okay so going back and forth is just whenever you want to all right. So with, you know, the George Benson thing, it was like George would, you know, like, uh, let me go back to this. Um, I got to stop in a minute because I got work to do. <clears throat> so. Okay, so we're basically on D and you go, you know, George Benson would do. He would go back and forth between major minor. There, there, there basically is, there is no particular time whenever you want to. It's what you want to say. If you want to be kind of happy and then you want to go to like, hey, dig this or whatever, you know, it's like happy. And then it's like stink face. 
bass mm -hmm. moment, and then you go to the minor. Okay, but with the blues, this is a little bit more complex. You got chord changes, and with every one of the chord changes in blues, technically you're changing key, because they're in a in a, any major key, there's only one dominant seventh chord, and yet we have three dominant seventh chords. We have an A7, D7, and E7. Those are all the five chords of relative keys. So this is technically when we're in A7, you could think of yourself as being in the key of D. When we're playing a D7, you could think of yourself as being the key of G. I don't really want you to worry about that. That's not the concern. But the thing is, Sam, that what you want to do is you probably just want to use the major or minor for the bar. You wouldn't want to maybe, like, I've got... Maybe when you have two bars of A there, you could go to the minor and go to the major, or go to the major and go to the minor, like I just did right there. But if you only have one bar of a chord, and then it's change, technically changing key, even though we're in A blues, and we could play the A minor pentatonic, or A minor blues scale, through all four, three of these chords, and you'd pretty much be in the pocket of blues. But you're not going to want you're probably not going to want to think that hard to change between major and minor. You might do it accidentally, like over the D chord, I might go... See that? So I start I start on the D minor pentatonic, and I slid up to the major third and then went down to the root, whatever. Um, you might do stuff like that, but, uh, you know, once you've kind of got that, found that, that D major pentatonic in this case, um, you might want to stay there for that those four beats. It's just one bar. It goes by pretty quick. If it's a bebop, it's going to be almost triple this speed. But when you have two bars, like on that A chord there, now I got some time that I can go back and forth between those two. So I would I would say, is there a, you were asking if you're playing. Is there a better time to modulate between major and minor? No, you can start on minor and go to major. You can start on major and go to minor. It's all depends on what you want to say and how you want to say. You know, if you want to start out with a happier thought, you know, then you start with a major. If you want to start out with a sadder kind of bent to your solo, you start with a minor. You know, it's all about emotion and manipulating people. <laughs> I'm 100% admitting that that's what music is. It's manipulation. You know, I play chord. It's like, what? Something's going to happen, you know? Or if I go, like, what? <laughs> you know, if I go. Oh. All right, James Bond, what is that? Wah, wah. Wah, wah. Star Wars, you know, it's, it's, the moving chords around and doing unexpected and and that's you know that's really the what makes music so fun and it makes music creation a lot of fun too you know you're like how can i how's it it's like when 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 one of the shows i work for they said oh we need some comedy stuff i'm like all right wh what is comedy you know what the heck how would i how do i imply comedy you know it's like i don't know. Is it minor? See, that's scary, right? But if I want funny, maybe. You go to augmented. Um. Usually it sounds like pizzicato strings sound funny. Goldfinger, yeah. Wah, wah, wah. That's what that was. Uh, almost to me, that augmented thing kind of sounds like a curiosity almost more than. I mean, you could just go out of key and just do weird stuff like that. But that, with sustain pedal, it sounds scary. But if you do it staccato short, it sounds almost comical. But if I did that with a, if I held down the sustain pedal, what's going on? <laughs> it's 
So it, music's amazing. And I'm just playing an F scale and an F sharp scale. And if I were to play those together, it'd definitely be comedy. It's like when Roadrunner hits his head or something. So, it, yeah. Funny erratic, exactly. So, um, not that you necessarily want to play a funny guitar solo. <laughs> you could. And if you wanted to, how would you do that? Uh, how would I play a funny blues solo, right? That's a good question. See, these are the kind of challenges you can give yourself that you never know what the repercussions could be. <laughs> you, could, you could ultimately like, wow. I'm really good at playing funny over the blues. And it's like all of a sudden, you know, two years later, where you've got like gold records and you're touring the world. Hey, it's the funny blues guy. <laughs> it's like, you never know. You just, you, but it's all about creating something, you know. Oh, wait. Oh, I got it. I'm on the piano. Eh, what sound do I want? Is that funny? <laughs> or, you know, I might be... Yeah, it's hard to con conceptualize what funny over blues would be. Almost have to go one chord at a time and say, what's funny over an A7? You know, and that's easier. Again, you know, because context is everything and A7 by itself has no context. Almost get away with that, you know, the clown show. What constitutes humorous? I, again, it's that's the hard one for me. You know, scary, tension, joy, uh, love. All those are easier to, to kind of find on instruments. You know, the you know in in movies they usually always use a Lydian mode to kind of imply you know hope. Turn you know the wheel is turning. Maybe you get this. You know, maybe something like a. very play when you, you got to put your fingers between the black notes just so hard you gotta just practice that sad blues made it <laughs> yeah yep funny blues is a contradiction but that's what would make it so amazing if you could def you could be the person in the world that defined it um, so anyway I need to get to work I've got a bunch of stuff I need to do and um, I've got, I've got games. Uh, what's who? Yeah, I mean, I haven't even checked my email, so I didn't open email in case that was the, for some reason. If it was some software that was interacting with logic that caused it to mute itself, but hopefully not. Um, okay, so um, while I'm talking to you, I'm gonna open up a track I've, I have a request to do something on. Uh, try to get to that first and then I've got other stuff coming, but um, Like I said, okay, cool 
Uh, I see buffering, but it's back. We're back. Sorry about that. Um, is it better now? Oh, it's because I quit. I, I changed. I closed that session. This one I can't play because it's someone's song. So, um, but I will. Um, I gotta. I gotta find the charts for these songs because I, I thought I was done. <laughs> so, oh, Club BMT, good to see you again. Uh, David, good to see you. I think it's we're good now, right? Not buffering anymore. Um, but yeah, that's you know one of the things you're getting in me is someone is actually fighting the good fight of making a living at playing guitar, which is a miracle. It is a literal miracle to do that, and I'm I count myself blessed. And it's amazing how many guitar players I know um, they're still doing music for a living, they're, but their careers have morphed. Either what they've they've gone from doing being a session player to being an artist. That's very common to tour, you know, like my friend Carl Verheyen, who still does sessions. Uh, <clears throat> but he often, you know, he's often on the road touring with his band. Or Larry Carlton or Lee Rittenauer. Both started out doing sessions. Uh, Lukather, same thing, you know, he's got a band. Uh, then there's other, there are other players that, that went from um, playing, uh, you know, doing session work to becoming teachers. Or uh, I have a friend that he just moved to Australia. You know, he was pretty pretty busy session bass player, but he just said, I want to live in Australia. And he's doing it there uh, to some degree, but probably not to the same degree that he was doing it in Los Angeles. Uh, Los Angeles is still probably the biggest uh, market for that, but I, I could literally pretty much work anywhere or live anywhere, and I could still do the work I'm doing. The only problem is, like, I had a meeting this, I went to an event this week and met a bunch of people. I, you know, Justin called me in to do a writing session of three weeks ago, and I went to do that. Of course, met a bunch of new people. Oh, I'm out of focus. Why am I out of focus? Come on. Come on, camera. Wow, that's weird. What did I do? <laughs> I'm all blue. Hey, I actually like this. I look 10 years younger. <laughs> Jeez, clock. Anyway, I guess that's my sign that I need to log out and shut up. So uh, thank you all for watching. I will see you next Monday. Bye.